Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get straight into it. This one, local one, uh, from Aiden Senior. Thank you very much. He's from Stockton here in New South Wales. So let's have a let's have a squeeze. We've got a box. Spray painted black. Not sure what the deal is there. So let's see what Aiden has sent. I've got a huge backlog of stuff, so sorry if you sent something in and I'm not getting to it. Um, I'll open them in sort of like a semi-random order, or maybe the largest ones first. Anyway, what do we got? We've got one of these um, timer things, two-minute teardown, and something's heavy. No, we're gonna. Oh, look! We've got a Rome e-tag. I've got the same e-tag in my car. I've always wanted to take apart one of these so um it's for you know road tolls and things like that here in australia we've kind of sort of standardized on this one you can use it across the country and things like that this is the older model that i've got i believe there's a smaller one and there is a battery in there spoiler alert um it's not powered from the uh field coming down there is actually a long life uh, battery in there it's going to be a lithium or uh, something or um, maybe a, a, a variation, not a lithium iron, like not a lithium. It'll be a lithium primary, but it'll be some long life variation of it or something. Whoa, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Wow. An optical attenuator. Uh, Wanderland and Goldman. Wow, wow. Oh, look at this. Hey, um, hey. Um, it's a fluke, but it's actually rebranded. Um, a 70 ADB multimeter. Another one! Bonanza! Wow, where do we start? Let's pick a random one. And I was wrong, this one is not an original uh, fluke. It's a rebadger, it's a clone from Parameters. Um, there, I don't think they're around anymore, but uh, yeah, I don't know how they got away with it back in the day. Um, it's the exact look and feel of a fluke's range of meters at the time with the uh, convenient side buttons like this. But um, obviously, well, I don't think fluke uh, actually took them to task. So anyway, they got away with it. Let's crack it open. Because I'm pretty darn sure Fluke never made one with a crappy uh, transistor tester and a uh, capacitance tester built in with the things on the front like this. That just wasn't Fluke's thing. So, yep. Yeah. But geez, it looks almost identical to the original flukes in terms of case and buttons and everything. Wow. And of course, classic through-hole construction for the day. We've got the uh, Intersil uh, 7106, although it's not a genuine Intersil. It's a TSC there. And um, yeah, we've got some LM358s, uh, are they? Yep, yeah, just some op amps and everything's just manual ranging. You know, input protection. <laughs> What's that? You know, we go, oh, no, hang on. Oh, might have something. Pretty how you doing. Um, there's some uh, trimmer pots and Bob's your uncle. Not much else. Very typical of the uh, era of these things. But, yeah, it's a little bit crusty. But, you know, this would have done the job back in the day. And it looks like it might still do the business today. Not a very safe meter, but, you know, meh. And a classic yellow manual ranger, a PE747R. Oh. And classic two ball construction of the era, all through hole as well. It'll have the same 7106 ish uh, type uh, converter, uh, you know, multimeter uh, chipset in there. They're all the rage. And every man and his dog made a uh, multimeter out of that chipset. So, meh. But once again, you know, bugger all input protection or anything like that. No HRC fuses, nothing. But, you know, as a basic multimeter in the 80s, it did the job. We've got ourselves metal threaded inserts down in there, and uh, that might surprise you. It's a, But it pretty much has to, because, well, there's no battery compartment. You've got to take the hole back off to get uh, to change the battery and change the fuse as well. But it's got auto power off. It would have had a decent battery life on this thing um, for those uh, chipsets. They were just uh, fine and dandy. But, yeah, this would have, it wouldn't have been a bottom of the range uh, meter for the day, but it certainly, uh, certainly wasn't a fluke. This one didn't survive, though. Thumbs down. And let's crap o <laughs> Crap. <laughs> let's... 
And let's crack open this uh, mains timer. It's a genuine Australian one. You can tell it's got the uh, approved uh, insulation on the pins. You're not allowed to sell uh, mains plugs and mains gear and extension cords and stuff if they don't have uh, power cords, if they don't have those. Anyway, in we go. Oh, silly me. I thought it was one of these uh, timer things. It's not. It's one of these uh, kilowatt hour um, uh, energy meter things. Anyway, in we go. In like Flynn. There's our current shunt. That, that looks half reasonable um yeah that looks half reasonable oh look we've got some protection there but um yeah it looks like we've got a micro on that board that's interesting it's got to be something under there and this side the lcd it'll just have a blob uh driver chip on board uh driver for the lcd here but let's whip them out and the bastards have rubbed the number off. There you go. But um, as you can see, like there's no, uh, you know, proper isolation here. It's just power from the mains, probably a capacitive uh, divider in there. So, you know, it's all isolated and within the package. And as long as you do it right, you can get away with that. So, you know, that's not too much of a drama, is that? I oh, know, I thought something was burnt down there. No, it's not, but um, yeah, so I don't know. That's obviously a um, uh, energy uh, monitoring chip, you know, one of those purpose design um, application-specific uh, chips. Mm, whatever, I don't know. If anyone's got data sheets, link them in. Hi, there we go. Different modes. The LCD is absolutely horrible. There we go, 1.4 watts. I'm just uh, uh, got this uh, plug pack plugged in here, just driving nothing. So it's that's just the uh, standby power of the plug pack. These things aren't gonna, generally not very accurate at all, right down at the low range. They're okay, you know, once you get into the tens of watts and the hundreds of watts and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, um, as you saw, it had a battery in there. It needs that to uh, keep the um, time up to, you know, in case the mains fails and things like that. It's got to have a timer to calculate kilowatt hours and there's the current there's the power and where's our energy come on there's our energy it'll get there tear down bonanza made in germany hi to all my german viewers wandel and goldman optical attenuator excellent uh, 1310 at 1550 nanometers thank you very much and yeah it's just going to have a couple of ugh, crusty look at oh look at the, <laughs> the rust on that wow on those nuts, this thing has seen better days, that's for sure. Let's see what's inside. Wow, what has happened to this thing? Um, <laughs> the cable just, oh no. Oh, that's, whoa, ugh. Ah, it's all over the bench. Everything's, oh, yep. Pretty crusty. Oh, look at the uh, leaching on the LCD there. Wow, <laughs> yeah. This thing has seen better days, and they, no wonder we've got rust and everything, but wow. And of course, it's unsurprising to find that the PCB does absolutely nothing on the optical side of things. Wow, look at that bodge down there. That's a hell of a bodge. Wow, is that multi-layer? I think we've got multi-layer stuff there. Wow. Oh, <laughs> how are you doing? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, all the optical stuff happens in the optical block here. So there's our fibre in, out, or vice versa, and down there. I wonder if we can take that apart. I might make that a separate video, maybe on my second channel. If you're not subscribed to EEV Blog 2, then you should be. I'll put it over there. E-tag teardown, let's go. It's from Rome, bloody rip-off merchants. Actually, I'm gonna leave this one for the EEV Blog 2 channel as well. So if you wanna see the teardown of this one, jump on over to EEV Blog 2 and subscribe. I've got to get through the rest of this mailbag. Next up, we've got one from Malaysia. Hi to all my Malaysian viewers. It's from um, ADS International, I guess. Is that just, it might, that could just be the shipping company. So, you know, it's it's got a pro forma invoice in here. So, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think I might know what this is. The description is, I think, a bit, I won't spoil it. Uh, the description is uh, not the best. It's from a company you may have heard of. There you go. I, how do you pronounce it? Um, uh, OU? AU? Something like that. They manufacture the... Um, oh, this is going to be tricky. I won't use a knife for this. They've completely covered it. So uh, they make uh, like cheap soldering irons and stuff. So if you've ever been on 
eBay searching for soldering or desoldering gear or something like that, you'll find this brand in there. And, um, it, you know, I'll admit they're not, um, they're not terrific. They are bottom of the range, right? Um, you know, but if you've only got 50 bucks to spend for a soldering station or something like that, then this brand pretty much, you know, comes up all the time. But what we have, they did describe it as a soldering station. And, oh, it, um, no, what it is... Ta-da! It's a 3D carving thing. It's like it looks like a soldering iron. It works kind of like a soldering iron. It's like battery powered uh, thing, you know, with a with a wedged tip on it. But it's designed for, I believe, um, actually carving and sort of like uh, reworking 3D printed plastics and things like that so um yeah blending refining cutting carving geez it does everything anyway this is really cool this probably we'll have a quick look at it a quick unboxing here we go and here it is the au that's how i'll pronounce it anyway the au 3d um it's a blending refining cutting carving it's got pla and abs mode it's got an advanced mode whatever that does oh i presume that you can set your own temperature there because the pla and abs will just have different set temperatures there it's got a sleep function so auto power off and a temperature readout so it's yeah it's a hot blade that's what it is let's open it up and check it out i like the box pretty fancy pantsy oh Oh, look at that, and look at all the tips you get. Well, I tell you what, the Rotoko, hmm, I don't know, is it being rebranded? Okay, now it starts, oh yeah, oh yes, the mark of quality QC past, oh, it just sends shivers down your spine every time you see one of those QC past stickers. Um, that feels really, really cheap, but uh, anyway, check it out. Look at this, we've got a little scoop. And these are the different tips you get. You get a uh, well-based one, so you, geez, you can do re you know, reflow soldering with that. Um, you get a curved conical tip like that. You get a scooper duper. I like the scooper duper. And you get a nice uh, big thick wedge there for slicing and dicing your uh, uh, 3D prints. Neat. And this thing's normally uh, 200 bucks, but it looks like it's on special for 115 at the moment. And uh, well, oh. Hang on, something, the rubber o-ring, where did that come off from? Did you see that where that came off from? Hmm, no, I'm assuming that goes over there like that, and that pushes down in there, and well, yeah, it, it feels, feels pretty cheap, but hmm, let's, let's give it a bowl, shall we? No wonder why it came in such a big case. Check out the stand. Isn't that jazzy? You assemble it yourself, just a couple of screws, and... Well, that's a, that's a Bobby Dazzler. It's, you know, it's a cheap feeling uh, thing, but all it's got to do is heat up and cut plastic. So, you know, it's not like it's got to have a huge thermal capacity, you know, like really good thermal capacity and everything like a soldering iron, of course. So it's, you know, it's probably going to do the business. And it came with a plug pack, even came with an Australian one, but uh, wah, fail. Doesn't have the proper insulation on it. Not legal in this country. Oh, and we get the uh, wiper dipe pad as well, but uh, there we go, it's currently off, so let's, uh, ABS, let's try that, wonder how long it takes to heat up, does it, oh, goes to temperature, there we go, got a little bar graph, how do we display the temperature mode, got to read the manual, it's only two buttons, there we go, no, Three, four, five, six, seven. What am I counting? What am I counting? Ten, nine, eight. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. And yep, first time you use it, smells just like a, uh, a virgin soldering iron tip. So, yeah, but there you go. It heats up. Let's slice and dice. All right, we've got two Yodas here. One, unfortunately, uh, was involved in a, uh, a very unfortunate uh, lightsaber incident, um, which we won't mention here. And this one, I don't know. What can we do with this Yoda? This is, um, I think this is ABS. Pretty sure it is. I don't know. I don't think Yoda needs his ear, does he? Let's slice through. Oh, lovely fumes. Oh, I'll breathe those in. 
Breathe those in. Whoa! <coughs> Lucky I've got an air purifier in here. I might have to turn it up, but uh, it's not. Uh, it's taken a while, but we are cutting through. And come on, you can do it. There we go. Yoda is now earless. Awesome. The unfortunate uh, problem with this is that how do you get the plastic off the tip? I'm, uh, you know, I can't wipe it off with your traditional sponge. This thing ain't working too great. Maybe I wasn't uh, supposed to slice right through with the whole tip like that, but ugh, it's a bit crusty. Yeah, might have to get out some of the uh, cleaning steel wool. Yep, that's what you need. Look at that. Like a bought one. So, I don't know, what can you say about that? Uh, this little mini review, it, it's a 3D sculpt in cutting tool like that. Could be very handy. Um, probably a little bit uh, pricey at 114 uh, US bucks even on uh, sale because it doesn't feel great quality. But as I said, the tips, the plating on the tips don't have to be um, all that uh, great quality. It just, you know, heats up. It's not like a, a soldering iron or anything like that, but it's got the different modes. The stand is nice. I really like that. It's going to be safe because it's powered from a plug pack here. There's not much to go wrong. There's a controller in there and it's going to go um, straight through to the element. And, well, it chopped off. Yoda's ear just fine and we could sculpt him out and I don't know rip him a new one and it's got all different uh, operating modes and things like that the manuals actually in all English and it's not bad so I get I don't know if there's another tool on the market like this but anyway it looks very handy thank you very much uh, AU for sending that one in the Retoco I'll link to it down below if you want one to that semi-deluded bloke. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, John DeRosa from West Dundee. Very apt. And that we have the crocodile. Yes, this is the crocodile Dundee knife, or pretty darn close to it anyway. It's not the it's not the actual one used in the movie, but it's not far off. Um, so thank you very much. It's a two-minute teardown. Thank you for telling us that. Um, so let's see what John has sent in. Yeah, I'm going to cut towards myself because I can. I know what I'm doing. I'm Australian. No worries. All right, let's see what John has sent in. It's a digital converter box, an iView box. Does it work? Is there a note? I guess he wants us to do a two-minute teardown. We can oblige. And John has sent in this uh, iView um, set-top box thing. Woo, actually, I'm... Uh, Recovering from those uh, ABS fumes. So I've got my uh, fume extractor on here, but geez, uh, my air purifier thing, but woo! <laughs> hey! Anyway, it's 45 channels near where he lives in Chicago. And it died a little bit of a time refusing to turn on when coming live. Finally, it died completely. Two minute teardown. Yeah, 90% empty space. No kidding. Let's go. Don't complain about one of those weird ass Yankee plugs. I don't know. Don't like them. Horrible boring and yep he's not kidding um there's not much inside we've got ourselves a crusty power supply down there i originally thought that was a uh, a bit of leakage from the bottom but it's not it's a bit of black gunk uh surprisingly like it's not holding it down at all but they got they got some over here on here as well so yeah, at least they attempted to hold the cap down from flapping around in the breeze i don't know but yeah there's our bridge rectifier mm, yeah, all quality stuff isn't it not um, it's built down to a price, and we've got one um, application-specific circuit in there. We've got a receiver by the looks of it. Well, the, the receiver's in there, and then some decoding for that. And Bob's your uncle, some drivers, and eh, yawn. Actually, what's likely to have uh, failed in this? Well, the power supply is your obvious first culprit. Your second culprit would be, well, look, they've sort of like, you know, bodged on a heat sink here. The thermal design of that chip probably, I don't know, well, you know, what brand or quality is it? Who knows? It's probably not sufficient and it just, yeah, just overheats. Um, it, it, a lot of people will uh, cover up the vent holes on these things. Um, like they'll put, you know, st it's usually in like your TV cabinet and things like that. So it's sitting under there and they'll like put papers and other stuff on there and it'll just, it warms up and warms up inside and gradually just, yeah. yeah. Next up, we've got another one from Australia. Somebody's used up all their stamps. There we go, Um, it's anonymous, pretty heavy. Um, so let's, let's check it out. 
Yeah, I don't think it has a name on it. It's probably a note inside. Some people send anonymous, and that's okay. If you don't want to shout, if you don't want to shout out. Uh, by the way, by default, if you send me something and your name and address is on, well, your name is on the thing. I'm gonna say who you are. So if you want to re remain re remain anonymous, then um, yeah, don't put your name on it. I guess. Thanks for everything, Bob. Bob's your uncle. No worries. Um, there's nothing else. It just says thanks for everything, Bob. And yes, if you want to know, Bob is my uncle. I do have an uncle, Bob. So there you go. Um, awesome. Ah, oh, yes. And as it turns out, this one's a little bit embarrassing. I, maybe I should have just uh, kept the. Um, I've just not included this in the mailbag because Bob is actually not a viewer. Uh, Bob is just somebody on eBay who I ordered this from. So um, it comes to the same address. So I don't know. I guess you should put mailbag on it. But oh, just wait until we see what we got in here. Oh, this is like classic way back Wednesday stuff. <laughs> and hang on. About 1920s beauty and even the paper from Bobbers looks like it's old yellowy paper it's even look it's like he got that out of a 50 year old notebook or something like that but ta-da here it is it is the cyclopedia none of this encyclopedia rubbish thank you very much it's the cyclopedia of applied electricity volume two I've got like six volumes or something and uh, this one does AC principles alternators rectifiers induction motors and look, it's still in uh, from the American Technical Society. Thank you very much. This is a beautiful piece of work. And let's open it up. It's still in really good nick. Look at this. Wow. Not, not a huge amount of yellowing on the papers there, but look at that. There's the Niagara Falls Power Company. There you go, courtesy of, courtesy of General Electric Corporation. That's a 2200 volt Generator, 4,000 kilowatts, 4 megawatts. Thank you very much. I'm a general reference work on direct current, blah, 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 illustrated with over 2,000, 2,000. Thank you very much. Engravings, none of this picture rubbish. Engravings, thank you very much. And published 1924. We should ask uh, Ted Whale about this. He probably had the complete set back in the day. Oh, copyright 1905, <laughs> like Einstein, ring a bell, copyright in Great Britain, and Francis Crocker, Robert Milliken, William Etsy, Harry Barnes, David Morton, Arthur Nelson, Louis Durr, are there more? There are more, oh wow, authors and contributors, wow, okay, thank you very much, this is way back when oh, holy authorities consulted <laughs> the editors have freely consulted the standard technical literature of american europe in the preparation of these volumes oh wow this is great stuff oh forward think again of telegraph and the recent discoveries in radio fields and thousands of other applications for electrical energy which contribute to our daily comfort it is not too much to expect that our scientists inventors may ultimately find a way of transmitting electricity without wires from generating stations no it's called u-beam and it failed anyway and tesla and all the rest of it anyway let's not get into that oh goodness no we're still no sorry wireless failed Hmm, wireless power. No. Throughout, the cyclopedia is as scientifically correct as a work could be, and yet the treatment of the various subjects is as free as possible from abstruse mathematics and unnecessary technical phrasing. Awesome! None of that integral rubbish. Oh, this is just fantastic. Like, 1924, it's still in fantastic nick, and... Let's have a look. I do have something bookmarked here. Look at these, like, these are engravings. They draw them and then they engraved plates. To, uh, they would have, I guess, engraved uh, plates to, um, for the printing press to print this thing. And um, uh, Tiernan actually found this. He was having a flick through and look what he found. Look, <laughs> looks like two leaves. Look. Wow. Look at that fascinating look it's a leaf I wonder if I can get that out without 
without damaging. Wow, look, pressed in there since, I don't know, was it the 1920s? I don't know, but that is brilliant. Oh, look at that, the complete seven volume set in great condition from 1924. Jealous much? And that's to go with my complete 10 volume set of applied electricity from, look at that, logo, I love it, from 1942. Thank you very much. Who needs Wikipedia when you got this beauty? Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler. Next up, one from Liverpool. Not Liverpool here in Sydney, but Liverpool in the old dart from Anthony Cross. Thank you very much, Anthony. And um, by the way, if you're hearing like stuff going on in the background, that's Tiernan. Where are you, Tiernan? Come and say hi. <laughs> he doesn't want to be on, but he's going to say hi. No, nah, you've got to come all the way around. He's a noob. There he is. That's Tiernan. He's doing all the packing and shipping and, uh, and other... Uh, well, that's all he's doing at the moment because we're backlogged, but uh, hopefully working on some stuff in the lab as well. So, there you go. That's Tiernan. I think he wants to stay off the grid, don't you, Tiernan? Me. Uh, there, there you go. Your voice is on there. The government can now uh, track it. And, uh, yep, it's, it's already voice analysed. Oh! Oh. Please do not bend. Okay. What's Anthony sent in? Check it out. I'm going to... Well, there's a note. Is there a note? Yes, there's a note. But this is rather interesting. Oh, oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a selection of LCD, oh, set, uh, LCDs and uh, CCD sensors. Fascinating. There you go. I love your channel especially. Maybe we can have a look on the uh, microscope and stuff. Uh, digital camera is clearing out 1.3 and 2 megapixel. And he uh, did a teardown. Of course you do a teardown. And uh, got these. There you go. So we'll have a quick squeeze. And Ant wants to know uh, if I can identify a um, thing that he saw underneath, like on one of the LCD glasses here that we've got. And if I could do it under my Tagano microscope. Okay, I can have a go. But um, the Tagano microscope, for those who don't know, is not really designed for high magnification uh, stuff. Yeah, it's got like 40 times zoom, optical zoom on the thing. Um, but, you know, it's not really designed for microscope type work but uh here we go go right down here and maybe we can get in hey we can see it there we go that's the best we can do on the tagano microscope i'll stop touching the table although it's probably all bumpy there we go it's just got some uh, registration uh marks and things so it's like it's a lithography uh, reference plate I think so you can get in there I won't get another microscope out I don't think and actually go in there but yeah and you can notice that there's a, a thing with a tiny uh, scale uh, down here as well so that allows them to get uh, references and when they do the lithographic processes they gen like do the plates and things like that then uh, they can or plates or films or however they uh, do the masks for these things, they can uh, inspect this sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's the best we're going to get out of the uh, Tagano microscope. As I said, it's not really designed, you know, if you really want to look at better features than that, you need something uh, higher magnification than, than, than the uh, Tagano. It's designed for, um, you know, uh, PCB work and uh, things like that. But it still does a reasonable job resolving that, doesn't it? That's pretty good. And if we follow the money, there's our ribbon cable coming in. And please excuse the crudity of uh, my fingers bumming around with this thing. But uh, there we go. We've got some more uh, detail uh, stuff happening down in there as well, just to get the resolution. So if you got down there with a microscope, you'll be able to see that. Anyway, you can see that all the serial lines are coming in here. And uh, there's going to be chip on glass technology, COG, and as opposed to COB, chip on board, chip on glass, and then they're going to have little bomb wires, and all those individual pads then go out to drive. They're all the uh, column drivers. So there would be the column driver chips right along there. And these, of course, test pads. 
Tagano does really does a spectacular job at boards like this and look at the color in that die oh wow that is that is fantastic wow and of course that's going to change with the uh, change with the angle of the lights and everything else but there's a uh, CCD sensor from one you know one of these crappy old uh, well probably good for the time 1.3 megapixel uh, cameras and that's as far as we can go into that but yeah you can see the little gold bond wires going over they're uh, ultrasonically welded usually those things a little machine does that or you can do it by hand of course you can get to hand bonding machines you can see the bond wires you can't see much detail in the uh, in the CCD sensor though unfortunately but that's still pretty neat and there's another one so thank you very much Ant for sending these in. Always fascinating to have a look at these under the microscope or the Tagano. Anyway, I do have better uh, microscopes I'm gonna get uh, with a couple hundred times magnification, things like that I have to uh, get back in order. But uh, you know, it does its job really well for PCBs and it's good for looking at sensors and stuff like that. There we go, there's the maximum zoom. Isn't that beautiful? Thanks Ant. Next up, one from the United States of America, um, ND. Where's ND? State. Mental block. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. Um, from Scott Roberts. Thank you very much. Uh, from Cavalier in ND in the US. So let's have a look. Thank you very much, Scott. See what you've sent in. Uh, North Dakota. Makes sense. Thank you very much, Tin. And he obviously Googled that in the background there. <laughs> and we have we have a note. We don't read the notes until later, do we? Oh, it, oh, a sh a rat shack. A rat shack. Shopping calculator. What do you do with the shopping calculator? Tax, color, multiply, subtract. What? And item. I'm sure, you can get an app for that these days. Um, oh, well, oh, to calculate a bonanza, we have a card size, another Rat Shack card size calculator. We'll take a look at these. And oh, one of these you know, crusty diaries, like three one minute teardowns. And here we have a Rat Shack calculator slash organizer bonanza here. And we have our shopping calculator, dual line display with the item total and stuff like that. And like somebody would have taken these shopping, right? hands up if you had one of these to calculate your shopping and things like that. Now you do it for phone app, but I've never seen anyone bother, you know, like calculating things at the uh, shopping center, I don't think ever. Anyway, we have a classic old electronic organizer here. I used to carry, who can, hands up, if you carried an organizer back in the day. I had one of the uh, sharp ones, I can't remember the model number, and um, they were really, you know, really quite good. This is how you kept names and phone numbers and other passwords and other information back in the day. You keep them in your electronic organizer. You carry it around everywhere. This is a pretty rudimentary one. Mm. Anyway, this one came with the original battery um, uh, protector things and I pulled them out and it works. No worries whatsoever. Of course it does. And this is more of your sharp type uh, diary type thing, you know, calendar planner and all that sort of uh, rubbish. But uh, mm, these were interesting back in the day. Is it worth even tearing them down? It's nothing, I mean, you know, there's nothing in them. There's a chip on board and that's it. If, if we're lucky, it's like a QFP or something. Eh. Ah, it's the EV blog, of course. We're going to take it apart. Yeah, chip on board, just the blob. <sighs> and it's the old sticky rubber membrane trick. And, oh, and my quest for a plastic flat package failed. All chip on board because, well, you've got to save that 0.1 cents. And Scott says these novelties were spendy back in the day, I bet. Um, I, he was a Starvage College student in the late 70s. Uh, a tad older than me, Scott is. And uh, you could get a full tank of gas for 15 bucks and have money left over for beer. Good on you, Scott, from Fairpoint Electronics in Cavalier, North Dakota. Yeah, Cavalier. I like the sound of it. Another one from Yankee Land. This one's from uh, Joshua Canova from uh, SP Sound and Production. He's from uh, Sailand in NH, uh, New Hampshire. So thank you very much. Let's have a squiz. Tongue at the 
right angle is important. Ah, oh, multiple things again. Wow. Another bonanza. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we've got a random uh, switch mode power supply. Oh, we've got multiple. They look identical. Where's Wally? And Austin works at a small uh, concert production company and bought some of these knockoff moving lights. Uh oh! <laughs> Straight from China bullshit. They have 230 watt lamp, very basic software. Plastic on the outside just feels cheap and build quality is pretty poor. Uh, they do work when they actually emit light though. Uh, the main issue is that the uh, driver uh, board and the lamps very quickly failed. Yeah, year for the seller to send us replacement. I'm surprised you even got replacement parts from the seller on eBay. Wow. Anyway, um, there. Let's take a look. He um, says T2, T3, T4, and T5 uh, probably need a heatsink. Let's have a squiz. Um, he says that they might be odd. Uh, 60 volt AC input and uh, 300 volt DC output. That is uh, that is quite odd. So let's have a quick squiz. This is one of them here. We've got our uh, low voltage control board here. Very common to have that on a vertical uh, riser board there. And uh, there, it looks like, we have four trannies. And I think the magic smoke has escaped. Can you see the see the charcoal? And oh yeah, looks like we've got a cap in there. And it's melted. So these are obviously the um, uh, primary side. Uh, yes, primary, because he said, yeah, this is, here's our input here. Uh, the primary side uh, drive transistors for the transformer. And they've obviously seen better days. Maybe they do need heatsink. Maybe they just um, shot through or something like that. And... Uh, yeah, I oh, don't like the uh, don't like the looks of it. Interestingly, we have these three caps here. Check out this. They've actually got those in series. Look at that. So they're getting a higher voltage there directly across the input. Wow. What? They weren't good enough on their own? Oh, yeah. Look, we've got some uh, track lift up there. Charcoal board there. Oh, Melfs, you know I'm a bit of a Melf fanboy. And, um, but otherwise, this board actually doesn't look, you know, it, it's not that bad. It's not the worst thing I've seen. Um, so, you know, I don't know. They just didn't get the thermals right. And, yeah, it, it failed. You know, they tested fine on the bench, no doubt. And they whipped out, they said, oh, yeah, ship it. We'll manufacture, you know, 20,000 of these things and ship them out. And Bob's your uncle, they, uh... They fail out in the field after, you know, 50 hours of use or something because nobody bothered to properly thermally test them in the chamber and, and over, uh, you know, the supply input supply limits and the output maximum loads and everything over the entire power operating envelope of the thing. Just, you know, poor engineering. No one bothered to do their homework on that thing. Fail. And they're Fairchild 19N20s for those playing along at home and they look like genuine Fairchilds. I mean, that looks like the genuine F, but uh, you never know your luck in the big city. And yeah, I, they just didn't do their homework. Anyway, um, they're a uh, 200 volt uh, MOSFET, you know, reasonable, but is it good enough for the design? I don't know, you'd need to get into all the intricacies of it and what's the, you know, the power envelope and the uh, current envelopes, the voltage envelopes, the whole thing. And well, I don't know, clearly they weren't good enough. They shouldn't blow. And maybe odds are that uh, this puppy is not going to, uh, you know, meet any um, emissions standards or anything like that. It's, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't look complete, you know, like there's no shielding on the uh, transformers or, you know, any, any nicety touches like that. But yeah, I've seen worse. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed another mailbag. That was an interesting mix of teardowns there. And if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks to everyone who sent stuff in. And sorry if I haven't got around to your stuff uh, yet. There is still a bit of a backlog there. But I will endeavour to do one every week. Till it's cleared. Catch you next time. And next up we have one from Luke Stone in Wangaratta. Which is in Victoria, Australia, if you didn't know. Hi Dave, found this old FPOS machine at a garage sale for $2 and I think would make an interesting teardown. I kept the power adapter for it in case I need it for some other project. Thanks, Luke.
Mommy, I have me put a top on. You took the golden doors off, Sandy. No, I have me. Help me put them back on. 